Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking about the latest craze, trend, uh, technology coming to filmmaking, which is large format video cameras. We have had large format stills cameras for many, many years, uh, even digitally. And now large format is making its way into the uh, motion film sphere for affordable digital cameras, specifically with the Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K and the upcoming Fujifilm camera. Will these be the, the new standard for independent filmmaking, Hollywood filmmaking? And what do we gain and what do we lose when we shift as filmmakers to uh, a medium format world? How far is the technology from something we can actually use to make our lives easier, better, faster, and cheaper? So I'm going to NAB next week in Vegas. Uh, I'll certainly be able to look at the Ursa Cine 12K. Blackmagic are actually releasing three new cameras, the Cine 12K LF, which is 36 by 24 sensor, the 17K65, which is a 51 by 24 sensor, um, and a Cine Immersive, which is you know, a 3D uh, dual lens camera, which I won't talk about today. That's, I'll leave that discussion for another time. But the two that are really interesting are the 12K and the 17K65. So for reference, the C400, has a 38.4 by 20 mil sensor, is about a quarter larger than what we're already calling um, full frame. So it's not that radical a departure uh, as far as size goes. In fact, I would be pushed to sort of point out the difference in the, in the size increase. Whereas the 17K65 um, with a 51, millimeter by 24 sensor is significantly larger. It's much closer to the uh, Alexa 65. CVP did a, a really great review, which I'll link to below, where they tested it, looked at it. Uh, it's actually gonna be very affordable. The, the 12K is only gonna be $7,000 US um, for the EF mount, but that's without an EVF. So you need to bring your own screen. It is a very large, heavy camera that needs a ton of power um, and is probably, in my opinion, the trade up in sensor size is not gonna be worth the trade down in usability, um, especially, and the camera's not out yet, but uh, CVP talked a lot about the kind of reliability issues that this camera has in, in you know pre-production. It's not out yet, so, so the, Cine 17K65 is actually going to be thirty thousand US dollars. That puts it in a you know, solidly rental space for most people. Um, it is going to be uh, have options for PL, LPL, uh, EF, and Hasselblad, which will mean that you can you can use EF lenses. I don't know of any large format EF lenses, but that means you can always crop in on the sensor and use a smaller size. Though, if you're doing that. You have to deal with all the disadvantages of the um, LF format, meaning the size, the weight, the power, um, and you don't get any of the um, advantages of the large format. So, or large format 65. So you probably want to use uh, large format LPL, which is Ari's large format mount that they make and sell. These lenses are twice the size again of full frame lenses, which means twice as much glass in every single uh, element of the lens, which means more to polish, much harder to create, much harder to uh, refine to the same high standard so you don't get all the bad cheap elements of a lens. So the good news is there are cheaper Chinese manufacturers uh, like Venus Optics creating LPL lenses now. I see one for 1700 bucks. It's a T 2.9. If you want to go Ari Signature Prime six set of uh, LPLs, you're at $167,000. They do make an Enzo Prime, which is cheaper, which is $90,000 or $86,000. So you can see that f at least for the next couple of years, the uh, true large format, the 65, is going to be a solidly rental item. 
And I personally think it's gonna be a studio item, meaning it's not something you're gonna take out into the field because you will have to take a ton of batteries. You're gonna to have to lug this thing with a uh, high duty tripod, heavy uh, duty head, uh, multiple batteries, uh, a screen, uh, huge lenses. You're gonna be carrying you know, probably close to 100 pounds of gear. So it makes it, if you see some of the f uh, behind the scenes shots of you know, the Joker, Ghost in the Shell, anything that was shot with the Alexa 65, you see how big the uh, unit becomes when you start shooting on, on large format. They are the downsides, you know, the cost, the weight, uh, the reliability. What do you actually get when you shoot, you jump up from full frame to 65 mil? It's hard to tell. It's very hard to tell. You get a much more expansive uh, view of things, meaning a, 35 millimeter lens uh, has is as wide angle as a 24 millimeter lens, but without any distortion. So then if you want to have these wonderful, wide, expansive um, vistas, uh, large format is the perfect format to capture that on. Thinking Lawrence of Arabia, uh, the opening of Dark Knight, which is the Joker bank robbery scene. It does feel very epic. It does feel uh, unmistakably cinematic because of the, the scale of the shots. If you're shooting people talking, which is 90% of a modern commercial film, you really aren't gonna see a difference in the quality of the film, uh, the quality of the image, the nature of the image. You're gonna be on similar lenses than you would be, like there's not that much difference between a 50 and a 75 as in terms of its dimension. No way near what's the difference between a, you know, an 18 and a 24. Going from a 50 to a 75, uh, which are the lenses that you're on when you're shooting people talking, you're shooting dialogue scenes, you're shooting um, exposition, you're shooting drama. Those things do not really make that much of a difference going from, even from Super 35 to large format. You, you don't, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Going from large format to 65 will make even, I think, even less of a difference uh, with a lot more expense. Though, if you are shooting landscapes, wildernesses, uh, huge skies, uh, cityscapes, all of those things become way more uh, epic. They become way more cinematic because you're not having the distortion of the, the wide angle. I think the exception would be if you're shooting in a very constrained space, a 65 millimeter camera or 65 millimeter sensor lets you get a wide without using a wide angle lens. So if you think of the, the scenes of the Joker dancing in the fluorescent light, where he sort of becomes the Joker, that was a real space. It didn't have wild walls, meaning they couldn't just pull out one of the walls to get the camera back further. Having a 65 millimeter lens in that sense, so, uh, they still use the mirror to great effect, which doubles the, the size of the space effectively because you can have him, you can shoot him through the mirror and get more distance from him. But the 65 millimeter sensor obviously did a great job at making that scene more epic than it would have been. So that's, they're the exceptions. You know, if I was shooting a feature film in a year from today, I probably would plan to shoot uh, all the dialogue, which is 80, 90% of the film on my C500 Mark II or on a C400 or even a C80, right? That same quality image on a $5,000 camera now. Then I would, if I was gonna have a B unit that was gonna go shoot the guy running across the rooftop of a train or over a, a swinging over an abyss, epic shots uh, that are gonna make a difference, then I would hire the camera and the lens for that week. It wouldn't be that expensive, especially if the camera itself is $30,000. These things usually rent out for, you know, 5% of their value. So you're looking at $1,500 a day. You probably get a three day week, you had some lenses, it probably cost less than four or $5,000 to rent a large format camera for the five, six, seven days that you actually need it on a feature film where it's gonna make a difference and save your 
three or four weeks of dialogue scenes um, for your regular affordable camera. That's going to cost less than a, than the 65 mil camera is going to cost to rent to buy. Then you can have it. You can do reshoots whenever you want. You don't have to go back and forth to the to the rental apartment. That would be my personal preference. But does that mean that all cameras are going to be large format, 65 mil format uh, in the near future? You know, maybe things are heading in that direction. There is a there is a lot of uh, sunk costs in all the large format lenses that we've had now for decades, decades and decades, which is you know pre -vid the video revolution, pre DSLR, uh, people were using uh, full frame lenses on their on their full on their cameras. Uh, those lenses are all still around. You know, a century of filmmaking on Super Thirty Five. The uh, Fujifilm GFX 100RF has just been announced. This is a fixed lens point and shoot uh, for $5,000 from Fujifilm with a uh, large format sensor. Again, it's that um, 43 or 40, 44 by 32 CMOS sensor. So it's getting up there. It's not all the way to 65, clearly, but it's... Um, a bit of a step up from the full frame and you probably would notice that. So these things are making their way into more and more cameras. Canon hasn't released one, Sony hasn't released one. No doubt they're working on it and it will come in, you know, Canon will release a C700 65 maybe in the next couple of years and then that technology like it always does spends the next five years making its way down through to the consumer model as the lenses get cheaper as the mounts get cheaper as more competition means that this is you know easier to get accessories for the thing that excites me about uh 65 mil shooting is that the c500 the r5c c400 c80 all permit you to crop in on the full frame sensor. So my C500 Mark II, I can shoot uh, at 4K or at 6K at uh, on the 50 mil lens, or say, let's say a 35 mil lens. I can go into APS-C, which gives me an equivalent of a 50 mil lens, and I can go further to Super 16, which gives me equivalent of a 75 mil lens. Each time I crop in on the sensor, I go up in the you know upper lens size. Now, if I were to have a 65 millimeter sensor, I can basically leave the camera on a 24 mil lens. I can crop in to full frame up to 35. I can crop in to super 35 up to 50. I can crop in again to uh, super 16 up to 75. So that one lens, that 24 millimeter lens would give me my establishing shot, my wide, my two shot, my uh, single, my close up and my extreme close up. I would not have to, I could invest in one really great 24 millimeter uh, RE or Canon lens and then stay on it, uh, not have to recalibrate my follow focus, not have to uh, expose my sensor if I'm outside, not have to mess, not have to buy the other lenses. You know, I could have a 20 mil and a 100 mil for emergencies, but other than that, I'm just clicking back back and forth um, on my sensor rather than changing lenses, meaning that the one, the one lens is gonna give the same color, the same dimension, the same uh, character to all of my shots. And I'm, you know, I can even do that in post if I'm shooting on a super 35 mil lens. Not that I recommend that, that just makes post twice as long because now you're making lens decisions in post. I would much rather shoot the uh, the two shot, then go into my uh, coverage over the shoulder, then go in and get a single um, from a slightly different angle so that it cuts with both of those shots. The punch in that never really cuts that well. So I would still shoot my dialogue uh, from the two shot, two on one actor side, two on the other actor side for a total of five takes good takes, maybe I'll do more takes, but five angles of coverage and not have to change lenses, not have to even buy another lens. That's why 65 mil uh, format shooting seems to me to be worth the, the upgrade. And the sensors, now that we're mass producing them, aren't that expensive. My R8 has a full frame sensor uh, that has plenty of dynamic range. The whole camera costs just over a thousand dollars. So, you know, if you put 
right? You put two of these sensors side by side and you end up with a 65 mil sensor. You know, if this camera can be manufactured for a thousand dollars, these sensors can be manufactured for less than that. Two of them can't cost more than $2,000. This particular sensor isn't the same one that's in the C400 and C80, but the economies of scale are somewhat integrated since they come out of probably a similar factory, a similar process, a similar R&D. So I don't think it's impossible to come up with a sub $10,000 65 millimeter sensor camera that has the same features as the C400. Uh, but it'll be a little while until Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm jump on that. Fujifilm do have a video version of the GFX 100 coming out. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's been announced. Maybe it'll be NAB and I can do a little article on it. But uh, we think we're certainly moving in that direction. It is not going to be a game changer. It is not going to be a paradigm shift as far as shooting goes it is going to be more of an evolution and it really does feel like one of the last evolutions that cameras can do um you know we have the alexa 35 which is a super high dynamic range camera people are buying it and people are using it but the footage that comes off it at least to my eye isn't that significantly better yes you hold some detail in the skies yes you hold some detail in the blacks they're the parts of the image that you're not really looking at anyway i feel like the the alexa 65 gives you know hdr kind of vibes where too much it's like it's like deep focus too much is in focus too much is exposed uh it probably helpful for some people or sh documentary shooters for sure shooting in challenging um, conditions where you know the sun is coming and going and you're trying to ride the iris to control exposure but you can't so on the alexa 35 you can correct in post somewhat i don't see it becoming part of the everyday uh cameras because it requires much more uh, power it requires much more um processing in the camera itself so cameras have to be bigger uh you can't get uh most people would much rather have high frame rates than they would high dynamic range they'd rather shoot 60 120p and probably the last uh i touched on it before but the last big advantage of the 65 is is resolution so if you're a nature wildlife photographer you can be shooting something on 200 500 millimeter lens that costs a lot of money uh though especially as the lens as the lenses get longer they cost more because the glass has to be bigger to be faster to reach that whereas you know a 16k or 17k resolution you can if as long as you're using a good piece of glass you can crop in on it significantly and get a really nice image of you know right here if we were shooting 16k i could get my eye the size of the screen and it wouldn't have any of the distortion so that is another advantage of, of 65 of large format um this new 12k the five thousand dollar one uh i don't think that the i don't think the increase in sensor size and the increase in the resolution is worth the the problems that it comes with namely the weight and power demands you need uh bigger batteries more of them um you need you can't handhold the camera anymore it won't work with gimbals you need it on a tripod you need it on a very heavy duty dolly or uh some kind of crazy crane um, and we give away all the freedom that we've got with the smaller and smaller cameras that we have like like the c80 and c400 so i will report back from nab uh this was a different sort of format i know i've been on kind of a tear of the the philosophy of film the last 11 12 episodes so uh this is what i have for this week thank you very much for watching i will see you next time